So, Michael, what uh, what was it that gave you the idea to start up the UFOI team? Well, you know, I have always been interested in uh, the paranormal, ufology, and uh, pretty much everything 14, you know. Uh, but I've always uh, had a profession that kind of kept me isolated from, uh, from being able to talk about it. Uh, so... Uh, finally, uh, in my older age, I decided, well, what the heck? <clears throat> At this point in my life, I don't care anyway. So I wanted to get together with like-minded individuals and uh, discuss these topics. And well, given the fact that you're or were a superior court judge at one time, I'm thinking that maybe your skills as an interviewer would be tremendously helpful in with witnesses and getting to the bottom of their stories. Well, you know, I think you might be right in that regard. Uh, 30 years being a lawyer as well uh, and uh, uh, trying to get down to the truth uh, of people's uh, testimony is uh, something that you learn uh, if you do it long enough. <clears throat> so I, I agree with you that that is an art. Uh, in interviewing people and try to be discerning about what they say and then following up on their answers as well to really drill down to the truth of the situation. Uh, as a matter of fact, with the UFO I team, when we accept uh, testimony from uh, witnesses with uh, UFO experiences and paranormal issues, we uh, definitely put them under oath initially. We ask them, do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? What do you enjoy most about doing this work, Michael? Well, um, meeting people like yourself, <laughs> <laughs> and the other people on the UFO I team, and working together towards a common goal. I think that's pretty... That's pretty doggone amazing and a lot of fun uh, for anyone to be able to be a part of a team and uh, working towards a, a, a goal that is important. And I can't uh, think of any other more important issue or problem or truth than uh, the reality of uh, potentially extraterrestrial life. So that's what I'm really enjoying here at this my stage of my life is uh, working with uh, other curious folks like yourself. What got you interested in this field? You know, uh, Lee, I think it might be something like you have experienced with your life, many others have as well, that we can't point to any one thing, um, even in our youth, that brought us to this point. But we've always had this burning desire to find out more about this idea of not being alone in the universe. For some reason, that's been very important to me uh, during my lifetime. And I can't really pinpoint when I started thinking that way. What made you decide to uh, join the UFO IT? Hmm. Well, just wanting to know more basically right i mean we all want to know more about what's going on out there and the only way to really do that is to go out and search and what better to do that with than people that i already know and trust and you're comfortable with you know, to yeah i know what's going on right so you you know quite a few of the i team members already and and have been already engaged in this this kind of research correct what uh, what skills or life experiences are you bringing to the team? Hmm. Well, I can definitely do a lot of the audio work. Um, very observant. I like to uh, I see something that doesn't seem right. I will always you know point it out, including stuff in the sky. That's probably one of my next ones too. I, uh, I'm pretty good at spotting things in the sky or seeing things, feeling things, and. And I don't mind going out to like the top of a mountain in the middle of uh, winter if I have to to get a good, uh, you know, good view of the sky. Absolutely, I'm one for that can vouch for that. Uh, you and me have been on several adventures looking at 
you know, going to crazy places and looking at that stuff in the sky that just can't be explained. Mm -hmm. How would your skills or experience inch us closer to disclosure, do you feel? Um, as an eyewitness, as someone who's been a part of this, uh, this scene for almost six years now, uh, you know, doing the research as far as knowing how to compare things, and basically that experience alone, even though, you know, I'm not like I'm no psychic or anything, but to me, when I pick up on uh, some certain things, they usually, you know, there tur tur turns out to be something behind it. <laughs> what are your aspirations for the future of the uh, UFO life? Man, I see it going places for sure. And that's why it's exciting to be a part of it. No matter how big or small the role is, I say I'm just happy to be a part of it and know the people that were behind it. Well, you for one, Ander, are the best sky spotter I have ever hung around, man. You can spot things in the sky that other people will not see. So I'm, uh, I'm definitely impressed with your skills. Mary... Why did you decide to join the UFOI team? I just saw it as a great opportunity to become involved in a group that believes in the same goals and mission as I do, which is to bring more awareness to the abduction phenomena, to the, to the reality of the fact that we are being visited and, um, you know, just it's good to be around people who will bring up different perspectives and different ideas and will treat it as a serious topic. What particular skills or life experiences are you bringing to the team? Well, um, I am a hypnotist and the reason I trained to become a hypnotist was I was strongly influenced by Bud Hopkins, who anybody in the ufology field knows. He was a researcher, an artist, a hypnotist, and he wrote some very compelling books um, using stories from people that he repeatedly regressed to, to bring out the details of their experiences partially remembered. And uh, I thought that that was a, a great application of hypnosis because it can bring to light the things, the nagging questions people have and help them rebuild a story and also to help them integrate that into their reality paradigm so that, you know, in, a, in such a way that it's not frightening or horrifying or, or um, threatening, but, you know, it's like, look, you came out the other side of this. And I've also been an experience of myself and I've, I've had sightings and I um, have a deep passion to shed more light on what has been kind of a mysterious subject for, you know, forever, for yeah. all of humanity's history, really. Right. One thing that I know, um, because of, you know, dealing with this myself, is that you get quite a bit of ridicule. Um, even bringing up the subject of UFOs. So um, it, it'll be helpful, definitely, uh, for your experience on the team. Yes, and that's that's another reason why I like the UFO I team. Other groups that I've been part of like this, and um, I strongly encourage people to, if there's not a UFO discussion group in their community, and maybe they should start one because we need to we need to destigmatize the people that have these experiences and we need to make it the more mainstream scientific topic that it really is and not just scientific but spiritual what got you interested in the field you know that's a question that I don't know if I have an answer to because I, as long as I can remember, as far back as I can remember, this has been a point of, of interest and fascination for me. Um, maybe I watched too much Star Trek when I was a kid. I don't, I don't know. but um, Or it could be a subconscious desire arising out of my own experiences that you know I have not fully realized yet. And for whatever reason, 
it's something that I feel completely drawn to and, um, and impassioned about. It's, and it's always been there. And I, I can't even, you know, it's been there for so long that I can't really even pinpoint a specific event that would have started it. It's, it's just like almost like it was in my DNA. What particular skills or life experiences are you bringing to the team? My experience in UFO I team is inner space. I've been investigating inner space for over 40 years. It's been a spiritual journey. So my contact is through telepathy and through clairvoyance, clairaudience. I'm a mystic, so I see in here differently. And um, I've been in contact with light beings. You could call them extraterrestrials or beings of multi-dimension for many years. So this is simply, it is simply the next chapter of that story. Yes, one of the things that I like about the I-Team is the fact that we come from so many different backgrounds and we bring so much into this idea or this experience of of UFOs and and abductions and so forth how would your skills or experiences inch us closer to disclosure well disclosure for me is different it doesn't mean I feel disclosures already happened in my own personal experience because I have contact with these beings in an ongoing way. It's, it's a relationship that's always present. I just have to tune in. It's like tuning into a, a radio channel. I just pay attention and I can connect. As far as disclosure, um, seeing alien craft, um, seeing an unidentified flying objects. Um, I think my what I have to contribute may dispel fear in people um, to let people know that there's more than the physical material world that there's a spiritual aspect to this uh, expanded race and family that we are and just because people look different and are are you know more intelligent and are flying faster and more more mysterious craft. It's no reason to be afraid. So I, I'm hoping that my inner investigation, inner space investigation, could dispel people's fears, and so that disclosure would be more um, would people would be more receptive to disclosure. What do you enjoy most about doing this work? We have a focused purpose, and our hearts and minds are, are in the same place. We have a mission, and I love that. I guess the only word I can think of is focus. What are your aspirations for the future of the UFO ID? I see us spreading our wings and flying, going all throughout the community of Washington State, and sharing our stories, sharing our sightings, inner and outer, <laughs> and and just letting people feel mm, like they're accepted, whatever their stories are, those people that we investigate, there's no story that's right or wrong. So I'm seeing us um, spreading goodwill throughout our communities that we are and I want us to be a reality TV show. There you go. I really that want happens. that to happen. I agree. I think that we will, we could open a lot of people's eyes, um, just like a show like Ancient Aliens. I really think. Yes. You know, they they talk about a lot about what's happened in the past, but we're catching footage of what's happening now, and. Yeah. Um, that's what people need to see as well, I think, to understand mm -hmm. that things are really happening today. What yeah. got you interested in this field? 
Um, it's a mystical field for me, and Angel Michael came in when, when, in one meditation, and that opened my relationship to light. But one specific moment happened when I was reciting a vision from my book, my She Dragon, How I Found My Wings book, and I realized the words, what I was saying, it sounded like my dragon was a UFO. And immediately I, I decided to get involved with Sufan. And so the UFI team was the next step after that. But I often see myself in this circular craft, this white, and I see the windows, and I'm part of the crew. So I think I could even be experience a parallel lifetime. A parallel reality, yeah. Yeah, yes. Absolutely. I've heard that a lot in uh, sessions before with other abductees. That's okay. a common thread. Okay, Betty, why did you decide to join the UFO IT? Well, Lee, my brother first told me about it, and he and I had an experience together when we were young. Um, and I know that he and I have had different kinds of uh, individually ongoing experiences with um, what we would call UFOs um, or extraterrestrial, uh, I'm not even sure sometimes I call it interdimensional beings. Um, and, and I knew that he felt like he had landed in a place where he met other people that had stories maybe different but in certain ways similar to ours, um, <laughs> an open place to actually share that experience and be heard and taken seriously and have, um, you know, critical thinkers <laughs> as well as experiencers um, there to provide feedback. So that's really how it started. Um, and then I had the opportunity to go out and do filming and an investigation with the team. And that, <laughs> that just moved me in, in so many ways. Um, and I think, you know, it's so important to interview people, to validate people's experiences, to let them know that they're not alone, to demystify things that might be sitting with people in a fearful place or in a lonesome place and let them know there's a community there and that there are answers there. And, um, the ability to interview, investigate, and then make that kind of connection, that real connection with people. Um, you know, there's a lot of deep healing work that's being done as well. So, What particular skills or life experiences are you bringing to the team? Uh, well, I think just as a human being, um, the number one thing that I'm bringing is a concern for my well-being and for other human beings' well-being, um, and I would even say, you know, just across the the realms of the heart and spirit, um, you know, the welfare of all beings everywhere. That's one thing that I'm bringing. Um, my background is in um, psychology, and I, you know, have done coaching. I, I do coaching. I do healing work with people. Um, uh, those are some of the things that I love to bring into every situation I'm a part of. Um, and I think that this is definitely a place where <laughs> that there's room for this and, and applicable. Um, and then I'm also an experiencer. So I've, I've seen things that I can't explain. I'll spend a lifetime probably <laughs> trying to dig to the bottom of them and, and removing more and more layers until it all makes more sense. But, um, I bring my own experience of seeing unexplainable things and and at the same time I'm still, um, you know, <laughs> a highly curious people and I'm also somebody who wants to check out the facts. So uh, I, I love the investigation aspect as well. I, I feel like all of this life, especially for those of us who have had these kinds of experiences, you know, must be like a treasure hunt of going from one piece to the next piece and putting together all the magic until we have an explanation. And, you know, we can do that on our own or we can do that better in a team and in a wider global community. What did you enjoy most about doing this work? It has to be the people connection. Gotcha. Um, 
you know, just making a difference wherever we can and taking something that has been kept quiet and in the shadows and putting light on it and letting the truth come out <laughs> so that it can be seen and known to so many people who, who don't have answers or that they themselves know what they know that they know. <laughs> I'm looking for um, people who also have information and aren't coming forward with it to be more um, forthright <laughs> and to tell the truth. There's, there's a lot we're not being told, and, uh, and I think we're a strong voice when we come together to ask for the truth. You know, I have always had this feeling like if you got enough experiences together in the same place, that they might just come to check out what's going on. What are your aspirations for the future of the UFO IT? Well, we have such an amazing team of investigators and what each person brings. Um, gosh, I can imagine amazing things for each and every one. So again, that, that team effort, you know, together everyone accomplishes more. You know, I, I know that we all have a, a goal line of bringing these things to light and of creating community around it and of having more truth be revealed. Um, I totally think that this is happening right now for a reason. And there is there's something, a, a, an attraction factor um, for the timing of our coming together, for the work that we're beginning to do more and more of, to how far it can reach other people who, at this same time, um, have their stories, have their experiences, or just know other people who have and are questioning more than ever before. You know, what are we, what have we been seeing in the skies? You know, why has this always been put in front of us? since there was a radio or a TV in our home. You know, there's a reason for it. People are waking up and they're getting stirred up. And I think that the UFO team is here at the right time, you know, to bring everybody together to that collective spotlight you were talking about. Betty, what got you interested in the first place in this field? I would have to say it's my own personal experience. Um, I, I was a child. <laughs> Uh, who saw things that I learned very early most people weren't seeing. I learned very early to not talk about those things, <laughs> um, you know, but of course I'm giving voice to it now. Um, so as that child, you know, I, I wanted to understand what nobody else could explain to me or had an answer for. So I've always been in that place of searching and trying to better understand and, you know, for a lot of investigators, they're um, seeing something that's, you know, very much in this world, in this realm, and they approach it in that way. Um, I do, but for me, it's also part of a spiritual path and journey. And, you know, I also, with a psychology background, believe in using all of my experiences, again, for my growth and the upliftment of others. So, you know, I think all of these things came together in the right combination in my early years and I'm you know still following that trail and I'm, I'm still dreaming bigger dreams for um, sharing this experience in a more global way. Bree, why did you decide to join the UFOI team? Well I have had two sightings myself over the years starting the first one starting in 1979 and the last one recent is about two years ago. And I've always been intrigued by the fact that I believe we have UFOs amongst us and out there. And so once I uh, was introduced to the UFO I team, I thought, now what a wonderful platform to be able to share my experiences, hear other people's experiences, and be a part of learning about anyone else's experiences. So it piqued my interest, and I just thought it was a uh, great platform for anyone who's been involved with any UFO sightings or contacts or anything like that. That, that kind of follows in with my next question. What particular skills or life experiences are you bringing to the team? Well, the UFO, uh, UFO I team mission is to go out and interview people who have experienced and witnessed UFOs and sightings. 
and it takes an investigative type of mind in asking the questions and making people feel comfortable and getting the answers that you, you want and direction you want. And I was a sworn police officer for 20 years. So working with people and asking people their stories, specifically what happens in, in the crime situation, it's a very detailed and specific uh, requirement to ask those questions and get all the information you need. So I feel at ease uh, in that position on the UFOI team speaking to other people who have seen UFOs. How would your skills and or experiences inch us closer to disclosure? Well, I feel that I kind of I have a reputable track record of serving the public as a police officer for 20 years. And I, I feel that as a result of uh, anyone that I'm interviewing knowing my background believes that I am a stand-up person and I'm not someone who likes to make things up or pretend because I always have been trained and come from the background of needing evidence and factual evidence, you know, just to to believe any story that I hear. And I, I think that people know, most people know that about police officers. So I think they'd they'd be upfront and um, and personal, and not not only upfront and personal, but also honest in reporting their sightings. What do you enjoy most about doing this type of work? Working with people, hearing other people's stories, and sharing the excitement of the fact that UFOs are real, and they they visited us for decades. And getting it out in the open, assisting the public in getting those facts out in the open. What are your aspirations for the future of the UFOI team? Well, I think we can provide services uh, of entertainment as well as uh, scientific for the public in, in numerous ways. Um, I know that the summit meetings and the gatherings are a good way to start, but I also feel that we could provide maybe tours or gatherings for interested people and um, just uh, help them to bring it out in the open mind. Yeah, I think, I think you're right on there. I mean, also the people that have witnessed <laughs> things themselves, making them feel comfortable so that they can come out into the open and talk about their experiences. That's a good point. Yeah, because you know how the government's always instructed people to be quiet and threaten them and don't say anything. And, and it's foolish because you know, there's just been too many sightings and right. uh, too many abductions, too many well, witnesses that have seen otherwise and people I think are you know there's, a, there's an awakening going on right now whether it's uh, all the uh, male molestations of all the females over the years in the workplace and that, that have, are coming out and I just think a lot of truth is, is coming out in this time in our lives and in this era yeah not you know it's not just I think it's not just the government that's trying to keep a lid on it but you know also, like, you know, if you're a church-going individual and your pastor is saying, oh, that's nothing but the devil, but people know what they saw and they may or may not have felt threatened by such things. So I do think yeah, it's important yeah, for everybody in all walks of life to just get yeah, that I agree out. With you on that. Yeah, get that out there and just let other people know, you know, that you shouldn't be called names or people shouldn't, you know, call you a fool because you've seen something that you can't explain. Right. And seen, seen something that have, we've been told for decades it doesn't exist when, when anyone who believes what they see and in their right mind knows they do exist because there are so many unexplained phenomenon out there that, that occurs that it's just unexplainable and, and it would be so fantastic to 
to have an open line of communication with some of those different extraterrestrials so we can learn from them. Yeah, Maybe we, we could find a cure for cancer. Maybe we could get rid of the nuclear programs. And, and I think it could just be a huge assistance to us. I agree. Instead of thinking we know everything and there's no one else but us. And that's an archaic thought process. Absolutely. So, so Barney, what made you uh, decide to join the UFOI team? Well, I've been um, involved in the local experience or community for about a year now. And um, through that, I became acquainted with Michael Hall. And in getting acquainted with him, I was i become very impressed with him and the kind of man he is. And um, last fall, the judge came to me and told me he needed my help. So um, I found it to be quite an honor that he asked for my help. And um, I, I immediately wanted to be a part of the UFO IT. What particular skill or life experiences are you bringing to the team? Uh, well, I like like I stated, uh, I'm an experiencer, and um, I've had pretty much a, a lifetime of paranormal type of experiences. Uh, beginning when I was very young, and continuing on through now into my adulthood. So. Yes, your sister was mentioning something about that. You two may have seen or did see um, a UFO outside your home when you were young. That's correct. Uh, she and I saw a flying disc together when when I was about uh, four or five years old. That's amazing. It really is that you guys could bounce, you know, bounce that reality off each other. For so many years, you know that that's something that most experiencers don't have. So that's that's a good thing for sure. Keeps you. Well, it was a, it was a thing. It was something that I sort of tucked away in my memory banks, and I have a way of compartmentalizing these experiences that that we've had together and that I've had independently also and haven't really, didn't start putting all the pieces of everything together and really examining it all, you know, um, until uh, the last couple of years. So um, as the disclosure is, is happening around us and in uh, the news and everything, it's funny because the, the same thing's been happening in my life. Uh, I've been accepting my reality Mm -hmm. rather than money from it. How would your skills and or experiences inch us closer to disclosure? As a member of this team, um, I'm, I'm bringing pretty much a lot of the same thing that, as you, Lee, and, and the other members because um, we're, we're, we're a group of experiencers and so we bring with us re relatedness. Mm -hmm. uh, we're we, we all have our own stories, so if, if we tell our stories, it opens up the space for other people to be comfortable and not afraid to talk about the things that, that happened to them. And it also provides a place for us to relate back to them. Uh -huh. uh, and on a grassroots level, I think that uh, it's going to build up a lot of momentum and uh, when it builds up enough momentum when the, when the people are angry enough and they want the truth enough uh, it'll be too hard to for, for the powers that be the government of the world to, to deny it and get away with uh, the culture of ridicule that they've tried to keep around this subject What do you enjoy most about doing this work? I enjoy the people. 
I enjoy uh, working with the I team, and I enjoy all the people that we've been meeting in our investigations, and uh, just the work that we're doing because it's higher purpose work. It's it comes from the heart, and uh, that's what we're all bringing. And that's what people will recognize, first and foremost. What got you interested in this field? Um, uh, I wouldn't so much say that it's an interest. Uh, I would say that it's part of my life. Johnny, why did you decide to join the UFOI team? Well, I'm looking for like-minded people that were into what seems to be, well, it used to be a very... Um, uh, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? Not in the mainstream thing. And uh, it was really hard to find people. And as it's coming in this new age where, you know, non-disclosure and all this stuff and more people are believing in this and it's making more sense that it was, it's easier to find people. So I, I found some people, UFO group, that met up my area and I met up with them and they had a a plan to take it even further to maybe, you know, investigate UFOs and aliens and anomalous sightings like this and maybe help bring other people's stories forward that maybe would be too embarrassed or didn't think anyone would listen. And so it's the aspect of helping bring those stories forward that really caught my eye and, and made me want to join to do this. What particular skills or life experiences are you bringing to the team? Um, I'm very, very visual, and I'm also very um, audio driven. So I feel like I can give a, a certain flair to the to the team to maybe catch people's eye a, a little bit more, more of a commercial look to certain things. Whereas, uh, you know, a lot of people well, a lot of people judge a book by its cover. Let's just put it that way. So you're just going to assume that. UFOs and aliens is probably going to be some kind of a campy thing, but I feel like if done correctly, you can really invite more people in by just a professional look, and I feel like I can bring that to the team with video and audio. I, for one, believe and have seen some of your videos, and I am just blown away at the quality and just seeing how cutting edge they are. They look so new and fresh. like. It's like a camera guy with a new idea of how to film something. And it's very exciting for me to see. How would your skills and or experiences inch us closer to disclosure? Well, I guess it goes along with what I said at the end of uh, the last question is I feel like if you have something that's got a little more flair to it, more people are going to listen to it, more people are going to actually give their attention to it. Whereas, you know, these days, people really have a really short attention span. So if you just give them something they've kind of seen before or whatever, they're just kind of going to overlook it. And I feel like with all the stuff coming out now, there's a lot of information that has been withheld from us, from our governments, and it's, it's not right. And I feel like people need to hear these stories and hear these, you know, non-disclosure things that are coming out. And if you package it in a way that's more palatable, to the masses, they're going to listen more often. What are your aspirations for the future of the UFOI team? Well, I hope that we can continue to grow in all ways that I guess you could for a business or a group or whatever, and you know, get out to these conventions, start meeting people, link up with more like-minded people that could possibly join the team or help out in other ways, marketing, and just really getting out there and hopefully getting more people's stories to the forefront before anything else just you know because everyone that has a story about it isn't always going to be willing to just come forward and tell everybody so if they have a team of people with experts that can help convey it better and help show them that they're not alone that's awesome and i hope that we can just help as many people as possible yeah that's definitely right i mean the whole premise of the ufo i team is to help dispel the stigma what got you interested in this field? Well, growing up when I was younger, I mean, I don't know what it was. I was always leaning towards ghosts and, you know, horror movies and just kind of weird, weird, weird stuff. And like, you know, I was obviously curious about the world and I was raised 
you know, somewhat religious, loosely, you know, religious, that like we went to church every so often kind of thing. And, like, I'm, I don't want to knock anybody's religion because I'm not all about that, but some things, you know, just never really added up to me. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, watching documentaries, you hear little tidbits and stuff, and then once you get into the age of, you know, information that we're in now, YouTube and everything, and everyone can put their opinion out there, a lot of smart people have been able to get you know their thoughts on it out there and I, I hear some of it and I'm like wow that's that makes more sense in my mind you know that kind of thing sounds like that's why that happened not because of magic not because of whatever that scientifically sounds correct to me and so because of that I'm just like well what what else can I learn what else can I figure out and dispel in this this world because I feel like you know we've been lied to for so long and it's not right, and for whatever reason, I mean, they're always changing the reason why they're lying to us, but I don't think that's that's fair, so I'm just really always looking for more information, and it's, it's amazing nowadays, and that's really what got me into it, and now it's just continuing on. So Lee, um, why did you decide to become a member of the UFO IT? Well, Michael, I think it was just the natural progression of things. Um, you know, I've, I've known you for six years now, you and a couple other guys, and um, just because we've gone out and done UFO hunting before and so forth, and, and you were telling me about this UFO IT team idea, and I was just like, that's a real exciting idea. Absolutely. Why wouldn't I want to be involved with something so awesome and the fact that we get to go out into the community and talk with other individuals that have seen these things as well. What skills or expertise are you bringing to the team? Well, I'm kind of the nuts and bolts guy in this whole thing, I think, Um, with my myriad of camera gear and night vision equipment and so forth. Also, you know, I am an experiencer as well, so I kind of have a feeling for, you know, other people and how they feel about their experiences if they've been abducted. So I think it's a a good thing to get out there and talk with those individuals, especially if they're scared about their experiences or have had maybe negative experiences, um, because originally that's what I thought mine was, was a negative experience. And it came came to be that that wasn't necessarily the case. So um, I bring to this team nuts and bolts and definitely understanding for those people that have been through the same sort of thing I have been through. And how are your skills and expertise inching us closer to disclosure? That's a tough question. <laughs> I think by, you know, showing the evidence that we gather um, from from our night watches and, you know, just basically, you know, we keep hitting this drum of this stuff is really happening, here's the evidence, and talking with those individuals that have been uh, abducted or have seen UFOs and and just keep beating that drum. I think that's the best way to get closer to disclosure. What do you enjoy most about doing this work? Oh boy. Um, You know, I I love the outdoors, man. That's, I grew up outside and I just love being out in the mountains or or in the wilderness or, you know, on the beaches. Um, I love taking pictures, I always have. Uh, photography is huge for me and it, and it has been for my family and um, I think I enjoy I definitely enjoy the company of people that have been through the same sort of thing I have um, because it's like you can bounce these ideas and, and and stories off each other and you each have a little piece of the puzzle that you can put together um, this massive collage of what's going on and and some somewhere in there we're going to find the truth with within that puzzle 
And what are your aspirations for the future of the UFO IT? Well, you know, I hope that we get more play, so to speak. I'm hoping that we can get out there and do more of what we have been doing um, on a continuing basis. I hope that it grows. I hope the UFO I team grows with with knowledge and expertise, and I, I hope we we advance. I, we, I hope we advance this thing closer to disclosure. And what initially got you interested in this entire field? I had my my experience frightening though it was i felt i needed to learn more through therapy and 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 found out that this wasn't as negative as i thought it was it blew my mind away and uh, i think the reality of this continually blows my mind away on a constant basis it, it's it's just an amazing thing to have to deal with in your life